At the retail level, lithium sulfide costs around $1,000 per kilogram in the United States. Well, Chinese researchers say that they've discovered a way to reduce the cost of solid state batteries. Guys, the biggest reason we don't have solid state batteries in cars is not because they can't be manufactured, it's really the price. The price is just too high. And Chinese, well, the Chinese say they've figured out how to just basically eliminate every solid state battery company that, that is in existence in America, in Europe, because they've reduced the cost by 90% get rid of this crucial element from a solid state battery and the price just plummets. Could this mean in you know five, 10 years, we'll all be driving around with solid state batteries in our EVs with a thousand miles of range? It's actually possible. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Chinese researchers say that they have discovered the holy grail. Now, lithium sulfur. It is very, very expensive. Lithium sulfide is the one of the key precursors that are used in solid state batteries. And yeah, like I said, it costs a lot of money. Now, if you're curious about lithium sulfide, there is a lithium sulfur battery currently in existence with incredible energy density of around 450 watt hours per kilogram. That would make it the highest energy density battery anywhere in the world if it was to be mass manufactured. Now, apparently there's actually companies that have developed recently, um, as in real products that you can use, lithium sulfide or lithium sulfur batteries with 550 watt hours per kilogram of energy density. I mean, compare that to say today's best lithium iron phosphate batteries, which have 192 watt hours per kilogram of energy density. I mean, literally triple the energy density of lithium ion phosphate batteries. So you can see here why a thousand miles of range in an EV with a battery like this is completely realistic. But like I said, that product itself, lithium sulfide is exceptionally expensive. And that's the reason why researchers in China have been working so hard on eliminating it from a solid state battery. These Chinese researchers have developed a solid state battery that promises to be significantly more affordable Meaning, yes, one day we could all be driving around in EVs with sol solid state batteries. Now, I didn't think this would happen for this key reason, but I could be wrong. This new design created by the University of Science and Technology of China promises to perform on par with competing options for next generation battery technology at a cost less than 10% of original solid state batteries. The invention of a novel solid electrolyte that eliminates the necessity for expensive lithium sulfide has made advancements in battery design possible. According to um, basically China, uh, many different news organizations in China are saying this is real. This development brings China closer to its goal of getting rid of every country outside of China. And what did I just say? No, sorry guys, I was just joking. China's goal of completely owning the battery market worldwide. Is that really their goal? No, probably not. But honestly guys, that's what could happen with this new discovery. China apparently is racing to actually get solar state batteries to work because the Chinese government are concerned that the biggest solar state battery companies are not in China. They're in the US. It's true, they are. And so the Chinese government are really pushing their battery companies to develop and their universities to develop this technology to be able to kind of compete with what they think could happen. Some of these batteries that could come out of Europe and in particular, the United States. And when I say Europe, there's a number of European manufacturers, Volkswagen, BMW, who are heavily invested in these solid state battery companies in the US, which are, well, they've been working on batteries for a long time. They've invested billions of dollars and they believe that they're very close to hitting production as in, you know, seeing these batteries in cars. Now, speaking of seeing these batteries in cars, they actually are in batteries in EVs right now. But of course, they're under testing. Apparently they're being tested in the US today. Now, when I say today, I mean as in all year this year. Contrary to traditional batteries, which employ liquid or gel polymer electrolytes for ionic conductions between the electrodes, solid state batteries use solid electrolytes. All solid state batteries promise to solve traditional lithium ion batteries capacity and safety drawbacks with sulfide solid electrolytes playing a pivotal role in their development. Now, speaking of safety problems, 
Safety is really not an issue with lithium ion phosphate batteries. You are literally a thousand times more likely to burn to death in a gas or diesel powered car, petrol powered car, than you are in an EV with a lithium ion phosphate battery, especially new ones with modern technology, thermal runaway protection, batteries like the new Aegis battery from Geely. I mean, you're, it's almost impossible to set that battery on fire. Same thing with BOD's blade battery. But the energy density of these lithium ion phosphate batteries is much lower than the potential that we can that we see for solid state batteries, which is probably 600 to 800 watt hours per kilogram, meaning the range could triple or even more than that with solid state batteries. And they have that additional benefit of being equally safe to lithium ion phosphate. Solid state batteries can use oxides or sulfides as the cathode to increase energy density. Because of their superior performance, sulfides are usually regarded as the most promising choice for the future of all solid state batteries. However, the cost is a big challenge. The cost of sulfide solar electrolytes typically exceeds $1,000 per kilogram at the retail level. So if you, you or I wanted to buy it online, um, but to actual big companies, they can get it around $200 per kilogram. It's still very expensive and far above the 50 kilogram price target or threshold that is needed for widespread adoption of these batteries. That's why a lot of people don't believe Toyota's claims of their solid state batteries, because Toyota has not said how they're going to actually make them affordable, how they're going to make these um, cars that the EVs they're going to sell at some point in the mythical future, um, how they're going to make them a price that anyone, well, you know, the average person can possibly afford. According to experts, these cost challenges arise from the elaborate synthesis process of the electrolytes which rely heavily on Li2S or lithium sulfide. Although the researchers around the world are striving to reduce the cost through various methods, a long-term exploration has shown that it is very difficult to achieve this goal, said Ma Cheng, a researcher at UTSC in China. So, what as a result of this, the industry has tried to reduce the high cost of sulfide solid electrolytes. Cheng and his team have developed a new material called LPSO, which does not need lithium sulfide. This new electrolyte is synthesized from two inexpensive compounds, bringing the ingredient cost down to $14 per kilogram. As you can see, big difference between $14 per kilogram and $200 per kilogram. That is less than 8% of the cost of raw materials for other sulfur solid electrolytes, which are technically now used in solid state batteries. And they're even used in solid state batteries that you can buy. You can buy them in small devices though, in devices like wearables. Remarkably, LPSO retains the key benefits of the best performing sulfide electrolytes, including compatibility with anodes that ensures performance stability. So this new material, it is unquestionably groundbreaking. It is unquestionably a game changer if it can be mass produced and I don't know about that yet. It does pair well though with high energy density anodes such as lithium metal and silicon, which are needed for ultra high energy density solid state batteries. Looking into the future, it is possible we're gonna see batteries that will, you know, really small batteries in EVs that will give us over a thousand miles of range. If you consider all these technological um, challenges that are being solved, there's got to be a, a, an incredible convergence as well with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is being used to discover this sort of thing. This is what these researchers are using, guys. They're actually using trained artificial intelligence models to help them discover these materials. These scientists didn't just go, oh, look, hang on a minute. How about, how about we just make this compound? I'm a genius. That's not how it works. They're literally having these um, super fast computers. I'm talking like insanely fast computers that cost millions of dollars, basically compute just constantly, constantly, constantly running, 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 until they go through every compound they can think of and try and combine all these different materials together to create all these different compounds. You're talking like billions of possibilities. So it takes them months until finally the computer spits out a, a, a new compound and it says, voila, we have the answer. That is essentially what's happened, but that will continue to happen. There's probably an even better version of this somewhere down the road. It could take this supercomputers another two, three, four years. It could take them six months. It could take them 10 years, but it's inevitable that this is just the beginning. Despite these promising results, Ma highlighted that further improvements in performance are anticipated and the team is working towards achieving them. Now, 
The results actually are pretty staggering. A battery made with LPSO and lithium metal has demonstrated more than 4,200 hours of stable cycling at room temperature. So it does appear to work. Now, it's a long way from actual production. It's a long way from going into an electric car or anything else for that matter. But it sounds very promising. Last year, like I said before, Toyota claimed to have created new solid state battery technology that would enable it to halve the cost of solid state batteries, halve the weight, and massively improve more than double the range of current today's EV batteries. But take that with a grain of salt because Toyota said the same thing back in 2014, and it's never let anyone see any of its prototypes ever. You know nothing about those batteries. It's very unusual for a company to be so secretive about their battery technology and to not reveal anything and make very lots of lots of big promises for more than 10 years. The biggest car maker in the world claimed it can create batteries with 745 miles of range, that's 1,200 kilometers, and rapid charging times of less than 10 minutes utilizing its new solid state battery architecture. Toyota announced that it would begin building cars with these solid state batteries in 2027, but it did say that it would also have these, um, these cars with solid state batteries in 2020 and 2021 as well and well we're three years past that date so let's see if 2027 is real for toyota i suspect it won't be on the other hand solid state batteries are very real there are many companies working on this there is billions and billions of dollars being invested into solid state batteries they will become reality evs eventually but the question is is there a need for them do we ever need solid state batteries batteries are improving in energy density every year and that's without solid state technology. I mean, theoretically right now, we've already hit some pretty staggering numbers. Look at, for example, Catals or CATL, the biggest battery company in the world, their condensed battery. That has an energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram. And well, it's real, it's currently in production. So will batteries like that potentially mean that solid state is not even needed? I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.